You're watching WCSD from Callaway County High School. If you store your guns properly, I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. And I won't have to tell my kids, this isn't a drill. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Always. Lock it up. Tell us do you know about running a hospital? It's easy to underestimate how much medical care can cost. For example, fixing a broken leg can cost up to $7,500. The average cost of a three-day hospital stay is around $30,000. But why is it so much? Hello, welcome to this week's Calais Connections. I'm McKenna Frederick and this week's guest is the CEO, CEO of the Murray Calais Hospital, Mr. Jerry Penner. Thank you for joining us today. McKenna, it's a great honor and pleasure to be here at WCSD, so thank you so much for the invitation. You're very welcome. I'm going to start out with some basic questions. Um, how long have you been here in Murray? Well, I arrived here in 2011, but I guess if you really went back, I, I got here in 1983. Actually, 1978, because I came to Murray State University. Okay, so is that where you have been for before you came to the Murray Hospital? Well, I spent, uh, I was fortunate when I came to Murray State University, I got a d degree in uh, military science to go along with biology. I went into the military for 29 years and started running hospitals about 1990. And after a 29 year career, I had the opportunity to come back here and take the uh, leadership position here at Murray Calloway County Hospital. What made you decide that you wanted to do that? Well, I think I knew a lot about the area, for mm -hmm. one, and being from Kentucky, I thought, time to come home. Mm -hmm. and it's been a long time. We've been traveling around. I, I was tell folks I got fired 16 times and been all over the great United States and even overseas. And to come back here to Kentucky and, and knowing what was very nice here about this rural area at Murray, uh, I thought that was something good for my family. And we made a decision. It was time to retire and time to come here. So you, you've been in the military before you were actually part of the hospital? I was, 29 years. Wow. Um, what's your favorite part of the job? Favorite part of the job? I think working with the people here in the community. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a great thing. What we do and how we service them. Uh, hospitals are very necessary, much like schools are. And what we do to take care of this community is just, it's just a special opportunity to be in charge of that. Are they polite? <laughs> I'm sorry? Are they polite You mean the school or you mean the people? <laughs> the people community? that you work with. Yeah, they really are. They're a fantastic bunch. And it takes a rare person to work in health care. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like you mentioned, your mom works in health care. And yes. it had a, a special individual to, to want to be part of uh, this whole system of what we do and taking care of people in their times of need. It's a very important thing. And uh, I can't really think of a more rewarding job I could possibly have. That's good. Um, is there any big accomplishments that you have made since you've been working at the Murray Hospital? Well, I hope it's been one or two, but I know it's all about me. I think more about the hospital. Probably the most important things that we do are to continuing to make those, uh, those uh, well, one, one that's coming up right now is putting up the hospice house. So if you haven't seen that out there on 94, the Anime Owen Residential Hospice House, great accomplishment, I think, for the Board of Trustees for this community. And it's a great philanthropic project, and me to be leading that's been a lot of fun. So we'll see that thing open up around here in the June time frame, and we're just really proud of that. Is there any pictures of it that... Um are posted anywhere? Oh, no, they're all over the place. I'm sure you'll find them. <laughs> okay. And if you participated in the marathon, the half marathon this weekend, mm -hmm. all the proceeds go to the Anime Owen Hospice House. Okay. So we continue to build on this particular project, and uh, I think it's going to be a very extraordinary thing for Galloway County to, to celebrate. That's good. Um, do you have any other CEOs that you look up to? Oh, probably several that I do, but my, one of my closest mentors out there is a, a guy by the name of David Rubenstein. And uh, Major General Rubenstein served in the, the military for many years, even before me. And I watched how he did business, and I watched how he ran his facilities and medical centers, and I really kind of looked up to his ability and how he dealt with people and how he strategically planned and, and made sure his facilities were, were uh, operationally successful. What makes y'all two different, like in the positions? What makes us different? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if we're that much different, uh, really. I think uh, part of being a CEO is one, learning how to deal with people. Very important. We have different types, whether they be physicians, whether they be nurses. And they, even being able to interface with your community is really important. And I think that's what David's strengths were, and I kind of capitalize on learning and watching him and try to do the exact same thing. 
Uh, have you been there longer than he has, or has he been there longer than Oh, you? gosh, no. He, uh, he, David was um, a little bit older than I was, and I watched him run several hospitals in the military. Okay. So um, been fun to uh, then kind of emulate some of the things that he did to make himself successful, and I tried to do the same things. So you pretty much like follow in his footsteps? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. <laughs> I mean, uh, he had the... Um, he's just a very dynamic individual and I wish I had that sort of a skill set. I like to think I'm somewhat dynamic but uh, not to the level of what he does and he went on to be the uh, the chairman of the uh, American College of Healthcare Executives which is a national organization the first time a military guy had ever done that. Oh, wow. So he's a pretty impressive guy so to, to follow in those footsteps I think was pretty pretty nice thing for me to try to, to emulate anyway. That's sweet. Uh, is there three things that you most and leak about the sorry about that. Can you tell me three things that you most and least like about your job? Ooh, gosh, you know, <laughs> I gotta honestly say, there's there's probably let me start with the the, the things I don't like. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe it's you know, a career finds you. You know, people will go in search of a career and say, okay, I've got to find something to do. And, and I think I was very fortunate. This career found me. Uh, I always wanted to be a physician growing up. And uh, that didn't happen for me, but I kind of turned that into, parlayed that into something I still liked, which was healthcare. Mm -hmm. And was very fortunate to get into a, a master's of healthcare administration program. And I can honestly say, when I wake up in the morning, I like going to work. I enjoy it. You look surprised, but, <laughs> uh, I, but I, I think you've got to find something that you like. It, it truly jazzes you. Uh, not that there's not things that aren't that that uh, you might have a, a piece of part of a, of a bad day. But when I go home at night, I, I enjoy it, I'm not, and I love getting up and to work to go. Now, the things that I like uh, most about it, I think one, working with the community, mm -hmm. that's a, a genuinely, uh, I mean, that's an altruistic thing, just being out and helping people. And two, the people that we have, as I mentioned, people in healthcare are special. Mm -hmm. They have uh, talents, and I think they have tolerance, and they got compassion, and loyalty, and dedication toward those patients, and that goes a, a tremendously long way. So working with them, I just feel very privileged to be able to do that. And uh, then last but not least, I think it's uh, really kind of giving back. You know, I feel like I'm giving back a little bit of my talents, uh, whether I'm training somebody or whether I'm having an opportunity to talk with you or mm -hmm. the, the community. I think that's uh, a lot of fun for me to be able to do. Well, let me just tell you, that is a huge shock that you're like the only person I've met that wakes up in the morning that enjoys their job. <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to say that. But is there anything that bugs you about your job? Like, hmm. I don't know if I want to call it bug, bug, but I think there's things that are challenges out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the healthcare uh, field that we're in right now, the whole healthcare arena environment in the United States is changing so turbulently. And I've been doing this for, oh gosh, a whole bunch of years. <laughs> and I could say this is the most turbulent time, even going back into the 80s, when I first started getting into healthcare, to where we are today. And things are just moving so rapidly. You know, you, whether it's a political climate that we're dealing with, or whether it's the state climate that we're dealing with in healthcare, uh, all those things come pretty quick. And I wish it would slow down a little bit, but I don't think it's going to. So if I, I wish I could have a little more control. Yes. But unfortunately, it's not up to me. It's really up to uh, people a lot higher than me, whether it be at the federal level or be at the state level. Can you give me one word that describes yourself best? I think dedicated. Dedicated. What makes you say that? I think you have to be when it comes to healthcare. There's a lot of things that, can, that throw those challenges at you day in and day out and you want to deal with the frustrations. And even though I like to deal with the challenges, um, I think you got to be able to, you, know, you got to maintain that stature. Um, so I'll, um, I think I'd probably wrap it up that way. That's good. Uh, I was researching yesterday about on y'all's website mm -hmm. and I saw where y'all had a four star rating on there. Can you tell me that, like what the what that means for the hospital? Well, uh, the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid, or we refer to them as CMS. CMS has just recently come out with this, these rating systems for hospitals, and it's part of the, again the governmental program of being, to let the consumer know how good we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, they look at many, many, many different aspects. It's not just about the quality care that we provide. It's are we financially? You mentioned earlier in your read that uh, there's a lot of costs that are out there, but mm -hmm. we're a great value. We're not a very expensive hospital when it comes to delivering care. We deliver great quality and we deliver great patient satisfaction. All those things go into the, the four-star rating uh, or five-star rating. And there aren't many of those hospitals in the nation that have five-star ratings. Uh, and there aren't many here even in Western Kentucky that have four-star ratings. So we're pretty proud of that. That really is a tribute to my staff. They do things right. They take care of patients the right way. They really pay attention to patient uh, safety and uh, quality. 
And um, I always tell people when they say, well, I want to go to Nashville, or I want to go to Paducah, mm -hmm. to go to these larger hospitals. I remind them that, uh, you know, bigger's not better. Better is better. Yes. Where can you, you know, there aren't that many four-star hospitals. Why would you go to a three-star or a two-star or a one-star? So I'm really proud of my staff and what they've accomplished. And that comes through a lot of hard work. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's something that's built in over time. That's our culture. Well, thank you for that information. We're going to be right back. We're going to take a short break. Pack of cigarettes? You need a little more, honey. What's a pack of smokes cost? Your smooth skin. See you again. Smoking causes wrinkles that age you prematurely. What are cigarettes costing you? And welcome back. Okay, now we're going to talk about, have there been any failures um, in the hospital that y'all have tried to accomplish but didn't? Yeah, I, I think uh, all, uh, we, we try to get better at what we try to do. Mm -hmm. You're always searching for a better way to deliver medicine somehow. Uh, one of the endeavors I just, you know, and, and you hate to have anything that you would call a failure. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had tried to, we as a strategic plan, had tried to open up some clinics up in Marshall County. And unfortunately, when we open those clinics up in Marshall County, the one thing that we were not able to overcome is patients still have their choice. So the, the law basically tells me I can't tell patients where they need to go. Uh -huh. So if I'm taking care of them in Marshall County, I can say, well, by the way, go get your MRI, your CT scan, or your labs all done at Murray Calloway. It's kind of against the law. Can't really uh, do that. Yeah. Now we can recommend, but they could really choose a, wherever they, you know, choose a place that they want to get their care. So in Marshall County, they've got options. They can either go to Marshall County Hospital mm -hmm. or they could really turn north and go to either Lourdes or Baptist to get their care or anywhere else they want to go or Jackson Purchase for that uh, matter. And what we were finding was we just weren't getting the revenues that we needed to do. So we were maintaining these clinics and trying to do everything we could. Not that we didn't have good people there. They were mm -hmm. fantastic people. And uh, just find that we weren't, uh, we weren't being able to break even in those areas. So I had to make a hard decision to close those clinics down. And... Um, it was, it's tough, and it's tough because you get 12, and I use one in particular uh, clinic that had 12 people, and it uh, breaks your heart to have to go in there and tell them, I'm sorry, we're going to have to move you back down yeah. to Murray, or you're, not, you're going to be out of a job. So that's not a lot of fun. That's, I'd say that, that may be the, the least fun thing I do in my, in my job, and it doesn't happen too often, but it was a challenge, and, and part of being a CEO is making the hard decision and make, being able to talk to my board of trustees and saying this is the right thing for us to do. Uh, it's a hard thing. And well, I'm sorry. Hated it. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that. That actually led to me into my uh, next question. Is there any other tough decisions that you had to make, and anything that made that difficult, or is that like the only? Oh well, gosh. Uh, you know, I talked about this turbulent healthcare environment that mm -hmm. we've been in. Uh, back in 2011, we had a very good year, decent year. Uh, 2012, the landscape, I think, in, in healthcare changed. Uh, we we began to bring in uh, Medicaid managed care. Uh, the money wasn't flowing very well from those uh, our managed care organizations, mm -hmm. and that hurts the hospital when you're talking about 12 or 13 percent of millions of dollars. Oh, wow. uh, and you've got to make payroll. You got to do all the things that you need to do, and that was some. It was pretty challenging for us at, at one point. So in 2012, 2013, we had tough, tough years. We were below. We didn't make margin that year, and um, you had to make some hard decisions. We actually took a five percent pay cut across the board for our staff, and that's a hard decision to make. And we laid off about 28 people. That was, was tough. Yeah, that's what I was actually going to ask that. That's too. tough. And, I mean, these are people here from the local area. And uh, whether you beat them going to church or whether you meet them online or whether you meet mm -hmm. them at Walmart or Lowe's, I mean, you're the one that fired them. I mean, I, it, made me, it didn't make me feel very good about that. Now, the flip side of that, 2014, mm -hmm. after we did things we needed to do to get ourselves stabilized, great year in 2014. Last year I'd say we had a, two, a fantastic year. We really did because we've done the right things. We've adjusted it to, to the healthcare environment that we're in right now and uh, we're not in any danger of doing what we did in the past. But those were hard decisions to get ourselves stabilized. 
I wish it were that easy all the time um, to, to, to always make money, but when you don't, you got to make hard decisions. And mm -hmm. that was a tough one for us to feed to the Board of Trustees and as, the, as they represent here this community and rep, also know that it's going to impact some lives. And that was a hard one. I would say that was probably the second hardest decision I had to make in my entire uh, career. What was the first? Well, uh, back in 1992, uh, I had a, I had come to an organization. I was a very young director at the time, uh -huh. and uh, I was, again, middle-level manager. And they tasked me with downsizing that facility. The Army was closing oh. uh, this facility from a hospital town to a, what they call a super clinic, it's just a large clinic. And uh, so we lost our inpatient capability all around. Yeah, I was the one who had to go and, and figure out who had to go and leave the jobs. That hurt. That hurt. That's just pain. That's so painful because it, it, it impacts people's livelihoods. And um, unfortunately, you got to do it at some point in time. So that's that. We lost a lot more people on that one. That's, I think that's why it made more of an impact for me. And that's why I've hated to do that. That was yeah. why it was so painful back in 2012 and 13 to have to make that decision because I remember what it was like in 1992. Does it hurt to like break it to people that I? Firing them? Or? Yeah, absolutely, because it's their job, mm -hmm. you know. And, and as uh, Callaway, Murray Callaway County Hospital is our second largest employer here in the area, right behind Murray State University. Mm -hmm. So we're an economic engine, and it shakes people's confidence knowing that we had to have a downsizing, thinking, oh my gosh, our hospital going to close. We were nowhere near having to close, but it, it certainly shook our confidence a little bit. It shakes the confidence of the community. Imagine if what, how you would feel, how your parents might feel if somebody said, oh, by the way, we're going to close down Callaway County High School because we don't have enough money. Ooh, that would be an impact. Um, and the same thing, it's kind of a punch in your stomach when you have to say, well, by the way, we're going to downsize a little bit here. And the fear might be, oh, well, gosh, is the hospital in that much of a financial trouble? Mm -hmm. Really, uh, we just had to make the right decisions to rebound. And, and we have and done extremely well over the last couple of years. So making the tough decision that's the hard part about being a leader, making a tough decision on that end to make sure you ensure our future was a very important thing for us to do. What um, makes them, like, helps your final decision to let them go? Ooh. Mm, well, I think you just have to look at the strategic plan. You know, uh, ultimately, you know, making a decision on the front end mm -hmm. is going to help people in the future. You don't see, see it yeah. yet, but you have to see it. You have to have the vision to know, look, if I make this decision now, I am confident that it will take us down the right road, and it did. We've had uh, two good financial years back to back. And last year, I, again, I'd have to say we were nearly fantastic. Um, but we wouldn't have been fantastic had we not made that decision back in 2012 to posture ourselves for our future. Mm, well, that's really good. Uh, is uh, what uh, part of your work was the most frustrating or unsatisfying? Well, you're going back to that frustrating thing all yes. over again. <laughs> um, I don't think anything really was. I mean, as I said, there's aspects I don't like that will happen, and that was one that just it was a painful thing to do. But you had to have a strong leader at the top to make that decision. Some might have waffled a little bit uh, and thought, well, we'll just kind of get through this. But you could have had just marginal years in the following. And, and I, I thought we needed to make the, the hard decision then to get me where we needed to go today. So didn't like it. Yeah, it was frustrating. Um, but I knew it was a necessary evil for me to have to make that decision. That's good. What are the biggest challenges um, of all hospitals in like America? Oh, today? Yes. Uh, it's the turbulence in the healthcare market. There's no question about that. You know, all of our, our uh, insurance companies are beginning to squeeze us a little bit. Federal government's trying to squeeze us a little bit. And we're unfortunately trying to squeeze, you know, blood out of a turnip. It's probably not going to happen. It's a little challenge. So as we're nipping at the margins and, and we get declining reimbursements for the things that we do, and I, you saw how much it might cost to fix a broken leg, for yeah. example, um, if those margins or those reimbursements start to go down, I've got to figure out where I can cut corners to be able to do things. One, the safe way, mm -hmm. patient safety. We can't ever cut corners there. Can't do that to our quality. That's not a good thing to do. So you got to look at other places to be able to figure out how you can become more economical and run your organization. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the challenge. And it's not just us, it's hospitals all over. I read an article this morning, as a matter of fact, there have been 71 hospitals that have closed in the United States over the last few years. And, and many of them are rural hospitals, just like Murray Calloway. Now we're in no danger of, of yeah. doing that. But some of them don't have the capability that we have to be able to figure out ways to close. For instance, a clinic to close down like we did up in Marshall County. Uh -huh. uh, they might not have that capability, uh, especially our critical access hospitals. Those are the hospitals that have 25 beds or less. Uh, they don't have a lot of, they don't have a, a, a big daddy to go to. Now, we're, we're a standalone hospital yes. too. We're a sole I, yeah. community hospital. But um, we're financially strong enough with our financial reserves that we can weather the storm. 
they really can't do that. Uh, for instance, my hospital now has uh, about 140 days cash on hand. Well, what does that mean? Well, it takes me about $300,000 a day to run that hospital. If we didn't see another patient, didn't see have another resident to be able to operate, so just multiply 300,000 times that uh, 140 days. I'm going to have to pull out a calculator yeah. for that. <laughs> well, let's just say it's upwards about 16, 17 million or so, and I'm just making the quick estimate. So having that as a, as a reserve is pretty strong for us. That's, it puts us in a very strong position. Many hospitals have like upwards of 200 days mm -hmm. uh, cash on hand, just in case you have you know, a hiccup somewhere in your healthcare system and you need to have some money there as a reserve. So we're doing pretty well. I'm pretty happy about that. But many of those hospitals have not been able to weather the storm. Um, there have been at least five hospitals here in the state, I believe, that have closed in the last uh, probably two or three years since I've been here. And I hate that. I sit on the Kentucky mm -hmm. Hospital Board of, of Trustees. Uh, Kentucky Hospital Association yeah. Board of Trustees. And to see those hospitals close just breaks my heart because think how that impacts their small communities. And now oh, there's, yeah. people have to drive farther and farther to get their health care. So it's a challenge and I'm glad we're a strong hospital and or at least are financially strong at this point in time. I am too and I'm, it breaks my heart to hear that stuff. But thank you for joining us today. Now I'm afraid we're out of time for this week's Kylie's Connections. If you want to know anything else, go to their website to find out more information. For Laker TV, I'm McKenna Frederick. Okay, that's there it. Is. It is.